Okay, can you tell us about uh, your 17 years in the uh, Air Force? Some of the high points. Uh, oh. Well, there's been a lot, uh, in the Air Force, there are a lot of high points. Uh, I think the best thing that ever happened was when we started to do all of them on the road. And uh, because we, we, when we had one location and the and temperature like it is now, people were coming in to the audience just to get warm, uh, to get off the street, you know. Oh. So we were not really that keen. And uh, they were rather blase. But then when we started taping every show in a different city, we had this tremendous, uh, exciting response every single time because it was a big occasion. They're all done as fundraisers for various organizations, and and so you had this very excited and excitable audience. And they're still doing it. They're taping right now in Yellowknife. Uh, I'm I haven't been doing it as much recently. Um, yeah, I have a one-man show. I've been doing in theaters. Uh, what's that all about? Well, the one-man show is uh, about everything that's going on in the world, and uh, and uh, well, I do some characters in the second half of the show. I do uh, Sergeant Renfrew, and I and I do uh, a little bit of an evangelist, and <laughs> I do an old man rescuing a boy on a bridge, and uh, what else do I do? Oh, a little bits of vignettes in the second half. But a lot of it is, is topical monologue about what's happening in the world. I even do a little bit of Dan Quayle at one point. Sergeant Webster is probably one of the most members of the uh, How did that come about? Well, that was a, an article that Sergeant Renfrew was, uh, uh, wasn't called that at that time. It was just an article about uh, what might happen if you were caught up in, and by mistake, ended up in the RCMP. Uh, it was written by Eric Nichol. And uh, that gave me the, the basic idea for doing it. And I, and I wrote to him and asked him how he'd feel about me making that into a stage piece. And he said it's because it had been taken from a newspaper and put in a book. And he said, if a publisher doesn't mind, I don't mind. So I sent him royalties for a long time. But then it evolved and got a name and changed. And then over the years of Air Force, we did dozens of them. So now you have a copyright on Julian Is that it? Well, I, I suppose. <laughs> I, I haven't really looked into that. but. Uh, it, it sure has uh, been a successful thing, and uh, it's surprising, you know, how much the RCMP themselves love it. I mean, I did it at headquarters in Ottawa, and they gave me five, I remember that, five standing ovations. And, uh, you know, when you think of it, a policeman who takes his uh, intellectual guidance from a dog, it's uh, uh, wonderful that they like it that much. <laughs> no, actually, they, I, I do it without malice, and so that's why. They love it because it humanizes the role of the police officer. Also, it's such a Canadian symbol. I mean, a Hollywoodized mm -hmm. version of, of Canada. Uh, is, is that have a sort of resonance within Canada? Or? Oh, within Canada, yeah. It's, it does not. It's nothing uh, to do outside of Canada. No, when I'm outside, I learned a long time ago the best thing I can do is just be Dave Broadcook, because uh, a Mountie, uh, especially over in England. A Mountie is a kind of uh, fantasy character to them. The, the scarlet tunic and the hat and the horse and all. They don't realize that in this country, a Mountie's in their life from the day you're born. They're involved with immigration. They're involved with drug enforcement. They're involved with parking your car at the airport. They're water safety, coast guard. They're uh, every, I mean, in, in, in the whole provinces, they are the entire force. They don't, we have provincial police here, but in other provinces, they don't. Uh, Some other provinces. 